My name is Thorsten Overgaard. I'm a Danish photographer. I travel the world taking photographs and teaching photography. Today I will talk about which Leica. I decided to do a video uh, which Leica to get. That is one of the really hard questions in life and it's something I want to talk to you about. Before I start, I will tell below the video there is link to free stuff. Uh, one of the things is my ebook about Elliot Erwitt, uh, Nick Wood, Nick Song, and the history of photography. It's a very interesting, inspiring little book. Uh, amongst other things, it has uh, how to understand Nick Song in 60 seconds. And also, I tell why I photograph, how I photograph, and what I look for. That's below the video, and that's also uh, because we are talking about this today, there's links to my different books and video classes about or on uh, different Leica cameras. But let's dive into it. If you are lucky, then uh, you have a Leica already. And the question you ask yourself is, should I upgrade to a newer or the new Leica? Or what should I do? If you're even more lucky, you have most of these and you're considering should I get uh, one more of these? Uh, or maybe uh, you don't have a Leica and then where to start? So I'll try to address all those concerns. Uh, I won't pro <laughs> promise that uh, I'm going to save you a lot of money or make life easier for you, but at least you're going to be much more informed after this video. Let's start in the beginning of Leica. This is close to the beginning. This is a Leica film camera and this is the M4 from 1966. Uh, this was a camera that only cost uh, $360 when it came out. And you can see this is where you put in the film. Uh, this is where Leica. So part of what I want to go over is like what is actually the difference between the different Leicas and you can say since the first Leica came out in 1925, they pretty much look the same. You can see here, if I told you this was a film camera, you would probably believe me uh, till you look closer at it. That's how much they look alike. And that was the concept. Uh, Oscar Barnack that invented the Leica and had uh, the Leica family produce it, which became the Leica factory and the Leica camera. He had this idea that you had to have a small camera and then you could make a big print in the dark room. And in, able to, in order to do that, you had to have roll film here and you had to, what he did back then, they took uh, the film format that he used for moving pictures and they doubled it. And that's how you got 24 times 36 millimeter uh, picture frames. That's the double size of what was used for moving pictures. Uh, and that is what is known as full frame. So he basically invented that uh, format or at least put it into wide use. And you see the camera is really small compared to the big wooden boxes they had back then. And for all this to work, you had to put on uh, really good optics so you could make a sharp picture on this small negative. And then later in the dark room, you could blow it up. Uh, that's a longer story that's actually also below the video. There's a link to uh, the Leica history where I tell more about this uh, and the consequences it has for all of photography because suddenly people could carry around a small camera and they couldn't have it in the pocket and they could go places and take photos and that was a completely new thing and it became something everybody uh, would do. Also thanks to Kodak that made a camera that was back then $1. Today if it was the same in today's money it would be $16. So that's a cheap camera, it's very easy to use, a little box, uh, bigger than this. Uh, but nevertheless a camera that a lot of people could use, women, kids, men, whatever, uh, all over the world. So you could say the Leica here, the small size of the Leica, the high quality and small size, and the Kodak was kind of the driving force that suddenly everybody wanted to have a camera and always wear a camera, sort of, or photograph everything. A little bit like you could say the iPhone was the start of smartphones. Now everybody sits and look at uh, the smartphone. So this is film, and that was film for a long time. And then in... Uh, 2006, Leica in Westline, Germany, made the first uh, digital camera that was called M8. So it's kind of like the go, this is M4, before that was M3. That's a little bit confusing because then there was, they didn't actually follow the numbers, but they do, 
SM1, M2, M3, M4, and so on, and even names and numbers before that, back to 1925. But M4, M5, M6, M7, then came M8, and that was digital. It's not here because I never bought that one. I had something that I thought was even better. And I'll show you here because I, whoops, I had this baby here, and I, I loosened this. It looks like a motor I loosened so I could show you because this one is actually a digital bag that Leica made for the SLR cameras they have. It's like, this is a huge camera and this is the one I used. And then they simply said, okay, we're going to make a digital bag. You can just put on here, you take off the film bag and you put in a bag here with a sensor. And then you close this one and you put on this that looks like a motor. But that is actually all the electronics that goes into to making this camera. And uh, that was uh, the digital camera that I used. And this is a crop sensor, it's, it's a full frame camera for film, but when you put in the sensor, it became a crop sensor. Um, and that was the first M8 was made with not the same sensor, but same principle. I actually tested those two cameras alongside because this one came a little bit before the M8. Uh, and that was the first Leica digital. And that was, uh, I would say, well, was a huge success, uh, sort of, because one of the things with uh, Leica users is they're very loyal and I often joke that uh, the best Leica you can make is one that is like it was in the old days. And kind of like M4 was a very popular camera, M6 was very popular. If you go look today, uh, the most historic, the most classic Leica is probably Leica M3, which is very similar to this one but just a little bit more uh, I would say almost artistic in the design, it has a few more details, it's more like, that's a really nice camera. And I think if you gave the choice to most Leica users, they would love to have an M3, uh, yeah, with a digital sensor. But almost they would prefer to have film in a digital way, you know. So old school is really uh, something Leica fans appreciate and Leica users, so that meant when the M8 came out, it was kind of like, yeah, wow, this is awesome. Finally, Leica is doing something uh, uh, modern, uh, futuristic, and all this. But do we really want to give up film? So that was kind of like the states of it. Uh, so that was in, in 2006. There was a few issues with, with uh, this first M8. There was something with the sensor that uh, black would sometimes go a little bit purple. Uh, so Leica came out with an M8 II in uh, 2008 um, and that was still a crop sensor and still a digital Leica but where the sensor had a UV layer so you didn't have that problem with that the colors would change sometimes uh, and that was a really good camera that M8 is still a great camera um, and it's interesting if you take uh, M4 here I said it was $360 when it came out uh, that is the same as $3000 these days uh, so that's how much it cost when you bought it in 1966. If you go on eBay, you will see that this camera goes from 1500 to 2000. You can find some banged up cheaper, but it's kind of interesting that the camera that basically cost 3000 uh, now, this many, many years later, almost cost the same. So it does keep the value. That's one good thing about Leica. And it also you can, you can, you can use them as a hammer and you can go in the rain and travel around the world with them and they still work pretty well and if they need adjustment they can be sent to the factory and they can actually oil and adjust and make everything as good as new again. So it keeps the value um, but you say the M8, M8 II is the breakthrough that is when Leica goes into digital photography um, <clears throat> and then one thing that was said in when them came out is like okay this is this is as good as it gets because you cannot make a like a full frame because uh, the lens, I'll show on this one, the lens sits so close to here as the film would be here and that's also where the sensor would be. So the lens is so close so the angle of light is, is just too steep. So the corners and, and the edges of, of the frame is not going to look pretty. It doesn't work. It can't be done. And that went on uh, for a while but then suddenly uh, on the 9th of September 2009, 909 in New York, Leica introduced uh, the M9 camera here, and this is uh, the first full frame. Uh, so suddenly had a Leica M with a full frame, so it's kind of like 
the old Leica, but digital and nothing really changed. Except uh, a few things, you could say there's a screen and the body is a little bit thicker, uh, but I mean the way it's built of brass and everything is the same. It takes the same lenses, that's one of the genius things with Leica is that you can go back to uh, almost 100 year old lenses and you can put them on a camera with an adapter. Uh, and a lot of the lenses like this on the M4 is bayonet, so it fits straight onto this one. The focus mechanism, everything works the same. Uh, so that means you can go out and pick up old lenses in Hong Kong, Japan, eBay, Germany, whatever, and you can put them on a modern uh, digital Leica. So this is the breakthrough with this one, full frame camera, and uh, it's, it's a beautiful camera. It has a CCD, CCD sensor, which was kind of like the standard at that time. Uh, that's what Phase 1 was using, that was what Hasselblad was using, that was kind of like what everybody who wanted to make quality pictures, they used CCD sensors. So this is what this one had. Uh, this one, when it came out, was uh, $6,500. Uh, this one sells for two and a half to three and a half thousand dollars today. So that's a camera from 2009. Some of them have sensor issues, which means that the sensor corrode. Um, sort of a big problem, but maybe not a big problem. It's something that if you stop down a lens, you might see it. And if you say if it starts corrodes, of course you get nervous. How long is my camera gonna last? For a long time, Leica would replace the sensor with a new one for free. Then they made a new sensor uh, design, and then that cost. I think it was $1,200 to replace the sensor. And then they ran out of those, so now you can't get a new sensor. So the only way you can still use it like an M9 is to find out with a replaced sensor, or you buy one with a sensor and think it's gonna work. And there's a good chance it's gonna work. I have two of them, and I don't really have any corrosion on uh, any of them. So maybe I'm lucky, maybe it's the climate, whatever. But that was the M9, and I forgot to say that the M8 II and M8 is kind of interesting also because the M8 you can buy for between $800 and $2,000 second hand. Um, and you can say the M8 has these funky uh, purple colors in the dark or black areas, sometimes in specific light. Um, I, I wouldn't say it's a big issue. Uh, there is a crop sensor, it's still a Leica. And one of the things that's really great about the M8 and M8 II is black and white. They're really good for black and white, and they're also good for if you're into infrared, which is not a lot of people are, but if you are, that is the camera to get. The interesting thing is that the M8 II that came out, both the M8 and M8 II cost $4,200 from new. The M8 you can get for, you know, $800 and up. The M8 II almost maintained the same price as it, as it cost when it came out, so they're like free to four and a half thousand second hand. So that's quite interesting. Then we get, we jump to the next one, and this is the M240, and it comes out in 2013. And here, <laughs> Leica starts to get advanced, because you could say from M8, like, I'm not sure I'm gonna jump to digital, I still like film, then comes full frame M9, and it's like explosion of people who want, now we're gonna go digital. And then probably Leica got a lot of emails and requests and phone calls and whatever, people walking up, knocking on the door, why can't you make a camera like this, and why can't it do like this? So the M240, you could say uh, the breakthrough in this one is still full frame. The breakthrough in this one is that it's a CMOS sensor. So it's a sensor that uses less energy, it's cheaper to make, but mainly you can have live view. So that means suddenly you can put on an EVF, electronic viewfinder here, and then you can see here what the sensor sees while you take the picture, or before you take the picture. And of course you can also see it on the screen. And then Leica thought, oh, let's put on video here. So they put on a button here so you can turn on the video. Uh, so this is almost like the camera, and of course the menu exploded on the back, and you can also see the number of buttons on the back here exploded. If you compare, the M9 is very simple. Uh, relatively simple menu, very simple menu compared to this one. So suddenly you have to scroll through a whole phone book uh, for all the features you can do, and you can do video, and you can do filters, you can do this and that. Uh, and everybody uh, at Leica thought this is awesome. Uh, now we're almost like Sony and Fuji and everybody else. And uh, you can say it worked, but um, again, Leica users basically would prefer to have an M3 with film and maybe digital. So all this fancy stuff maybe wasn't 
really what people wanted. They might say that, why don't you do this? But it's not that they actually wanted it. Uh, so then we took the next step. And the next step was the Leica M10. So if you wonder why is this M9, M240 and M10, that's confusing. And it is confusing. Uh, so what happened was that when Leica had made the M9, then they made an overall strategy and said, okay, now in the future, we're just going to call it the Leica M. And you can actually see here, it just says M. So in the future, all Leica cameras are going to be like an M and it will give them a type number. So this is type 240, so that's why it's called M240. They did the same with the medium format cameras that there was suddenly the Leica S and no number uh, and so on. So all the cameras, even the small Dlux, there was Dlux 6 and then came Dlux type 107 or whatever. Uh, and nobody can find out those numbers. Nobody can remember what it is. So the idea was that it, they would do just like Apple, that you buy a MacBook Pro. And it doesn't say MacBook Pro 11 or MacBook Pro 9. It says MacBook Pro. And then you know what year it is or what processor it was. And the same way, like I had the idea that, no, we're going to develop this camera. You can, you can upgrade it to more memory and you can do this and that. Never really happened, but it was a great idea. And it's kind of an idea from back when Leica was young in 1925. When you bought a Leica, there was a guarantee that when Leica invented new features for a camera, you could send back your camera from 1925 and get it upgraded to the 1932 model or some of the 92 models. So it's very flexible. So that was maybe a little bit of the idea with this one that we're just going to improve on it. We're going to maintain this this camera and then we're going to improve gradually as new technology comes out. Never really happened. Uh, instead came M10 and here you can tell uh, like I listened to uh, the customers because one of the things customers consistently said is like no this is not like a film camera it has to be like this one and with this one they mean the size and also the thickness and you look at the M240 here you can see this is a, a clunky thing compared to this one it doesn't really feel like it's not when you use it that it's like wow this is like a brick it's just not the same as this this is very elegant so suddenly you get M10 and it actually they managed to squeeze it together here so it's almost the same uh, thickness as the film cameras so that's great and then uh, you can see this one is a green one because i had the m10 i had uh, a silver and a black and then came uh, midway in this one came also a m10p and the M10P took another jump that was also very one, and that was like the sudden the, sil the shutter became silent, very silent. I mean, these cameras are traditionally very silent. Uh, that doesn't say a lot, like this, uh, and that's kind of like the ideal. People can can you make a camera with that says like the same uh, as my old camera from 1940s or whatever. Uh, so here they actually did that, but first came the M10, still CMOS. And it came a new uh, live view unit like this one, uh, improved view, you could say higher resolution and everything. And then Leica also added the ISO deal here. So suddenly you, you, could, you could change the ISO on a dial here. And this dial here looks like uh, the one that was on the old cameras where you had the rewind knob uh, looked like this. So, so basically they put in this one again and you think, oh, this is to rewind the film. No, this is to change uh, the ISO. And you said for each camera, the ISO goes up. This is like the usable maximum ISO on the M9 is 800. When we get up here, we're around 3200, 6400. So all those things happen. And of course, the megapixels goes up. I forgot the megapixels because the M8 was 10, M9 is 18, this is 24. And then came M10. They said, okay, we're going to stay with 24. And everybody said, that's awesome because we don't need that big, big picture for us. You could basically say, if you compare to film, what is the highest resolution the eye can resolve is 18 megapixels. So why go higher than that? So, okay, 24, let's stay at 24 for a while. And here with the M10, you could say then Leica actually got into uh, this idea of improving the same model. So first came the M10, so I used the M10 and the shutter sound has a little like metallic clunk. Then came the M10P and I, had, I changed my two M10s to M10P a black and a silver. And then Leica came out also uh, traditionally 
or very often they come out with a safari edition and there's this green one they usually come with it just in the end just like six months before the next camera model comes but this one they actually came out with it early so this is why i got this one you can see i used it a lot this has been my main camera until uh, recently uh, and it's a great camera in many ways uh, and then i said m10 m10p and then they also made but i'm not really going to go into that they made also an m10d without the screen on the back and you can say if you look at by the way you look at all the buttons you have on this one and then it's down to three buttons here it gets better and better it gets more and more like it, it gets more and more like the old like m3 which is the ideal for for all Leica users um, but we just need to have something we can look forward to and we can buy so that's kind of the deal but basically uh, if Leica stopped producing cameras we would just hold on to our m3 so the next thing that happened, happened was that in uh, 2020 Leica came with the M10R and it is this one and fundamentally it's the same as the P it has the silent shutter full frame CMOS all this jazz but then it has 40 megapixel sensor so that was a way to let's just jump it up uh, and you can say the EVF fits everything looks the same everything is the same uh, new sensor 40 megapixels that's kind of the jump on this one and if I forgot to say prices, then we have M240. I made a note here. M240 was 7,000 when it came out. So six and a half, 7,000. Uh, this one, I think, was seven and a half, 8,000 when it came out, the 10 and the P. Uh, <clears throat> the M9 goes for 2,000 to two, three and a half thousand second hand. It's kind of like a little bit collector's item. Uh, and they're getting scarce. So people are like, oh, I need a M9 before it's too late. So that, of course, drives prices up. M240 is probably right the second. The M240 is probably the best intro camera. So if you want to get into a Leica, apart from the M8, but if you want, you can say a real full frame Leica M digital camera, then the M240 is uh, interesting because there's quite a lot of them. And second hand price is like 2,000 2, to 3,500, uh, depending how lucky you are to find one. Uh, M10 is still fairly new. so. It's five, six thousand second hand usually. Uh, M10R is so new, so you can say when it came out, it's eight and a half, nine thousand dollars. And that's kind of still uh, the price. You could say seven, eight, nine thousand second hand. Uh, it's so new, it's from 2020. So there's not a lot of them floating around second hand, maybe. Uh, and this one is also so new, so it just stopped production when the next camera came. Uh, so this one you can still find with uh, Leica dealers that they can have them or open box whatever or they have some brand new never opened uh, you can go there's a link below the video here so if you dream of upgrading but you're not sure where to go and you think okay M10R with 4 megapixels that's gonna last a lifetime let me get one of those and sell my old camera or whatever then uh, use the link below the video that's to Ken Hansen in New York uh, it's probably one of the best places to trade in uh, used equipment uh, and see what you can make of uh, of interesting deal so that was the M10R and then comes the new baby in January uh, 2022 came big surprise M11 and here the breakthrough is well you can see if you look at it from the outside there's not a lot of breakthrough to see uh, but different stuff happened uh, more simplicity again if you look at this one here three buttons to the left uh, but they said okay this one we're actually going to make a multi-function button this function button it means you can reprogram it to have something else and they added one up here the removed one here in the front that this baby is not here anymore um, and then <clears throat> it's actually a little bit thinner than this uh, I'm not sure you would actually be able to tell if you look at the specification you will see it is actually a little bit thinner because the screen here is uh, apparently pressed in a little bit more there's a lot of design things that you could say uh, the screen follows here uh, the buttons are put on the letter here there's no frame so it's kind of like more simplicity there um, <clears throat> and then what happens with this one is that we get almost shutterless uh, camera so you know we had mirrorless but you say Leica was always mirrorless there's never been a mirror slapping in a Leica but it had been a shutter 
And there is still a shutter in this one, you can still shoot uh, with a shutter, but you can also shoot with digital shutter. And when you do that, you can go up to 1 16th of a second. And the base ISO here is reduced to 64, which is very unique. And suddenly it means that, and you couldn't do that before, you can shoot with a light strong lens like this one, it's a 50.95. Uh, with this one and this camera, you couldn't get fast enough shutter speed or you couldn't go low enough in ISO, so you could actually shoot this one wide open in sunshine, unless you put on the ND filter, which is kind of like sunglasses for lenses. With this one, you don't have to worry about that anymore. You can shoot any lens in sunshine. Uh, the shutter is fast enough, the ISO is low enough, uh, and of course the ISO can go higher again. I would say 8, 12,000 is probably usable. I don't think I would ever need to use it. Uh, but you could say almost like the limit for how much ISO do I want, it solves in this one. Then comes the interesting thing, <coughs> this is a 60 megapixel sensor. Uh, and that's almost like, yeah, of course it's always going to be bigger and bigger and bigger, even if you don't need it. I think 18 megapixel, 24 megapixel is uh, plenty, but there's no way you can stop that trend. It is going to be 60, it is going to be 80, it is going to be 100 in the future, 150, 250. One day we're going to have gigapixels and we're all going to love it and talk about how many gigapixels our phone has. That's just the way it goes. But here Leica made uh, a very interesting new sensor because this sensor can do three different sizes. Uh, so you can do 60 and you can do 30, 37 and you can do 18 megapixels raw files. Uh, and people tend to get a little bit confused because it has also digital zoom, but okay, so listen, <laughs> the sensor has, uh, f you could say kind of like all the dots is kind of in some way made so you can use all of them, 60 megapixels, then you can use the full frame, but not all of them, and they kind of get put in the same bin, I don't know how they do it exactly, and I don't really care, uh, but then you can get 37 megapixels. You can also go 18 megapixels. And one of the advances that could be with that is actually as 37 megapixels, you probably have half a one stop or one and a half stop more dynamic range. And maybe you have other image quality things uh, in the M11. I mean, very interesting concept. And the whole sensor is also they have two layers of very thin glass that gives less reflection. Uh, because when you put protective glass, in front of a sensor, of course there's going to be reflections and there's going to be some, some stuff going on. So they made those very thin and they made one that takes away infrared light and they take one that takes ultraviolet light. And that's basically, uh, you get uh, inferior, you get cleaner and better and more accurate colors. So that's kind of uh, the breakthrough in this one. And then like I did something that uh, nobody is gonna like because everybody want an N3 like this uh, and I showed you how you take off the, the bottom here for the film and this is also what you did here on the M9 and forward you take off this one and there is no film in here but then there is battery and SD card uh, and that has been a tradition that like it did that and then starting with the M11 what they did they said okay we're gonna make it like this so you can't take off the bottom plate, but you can shoot out the battery here. And then you have the SD card in here. Uh, and they even put a USB-C here, so you can charge the camera with this, but you can also download the images. And they added internal 64 gigabyte memory to store your pictures. So if you run out of space or you forgot your SD card, no problem, you can still shoot. And all the cameras here back have Wi-Fi, so you can connect it to your smartphone. You can you can see the pictures immediately. You can also control the camera from the smartphone, uh, but you can download previews or full files to your phone or iPad, and you can post them or send them or whatever immediately. So this, you could say, is a very uh, interesting camera in the way that now with the digital uh, shutter, you can actually do it completely soundless. It doesn't make any sound. And it's not a completely new concept. I'll show you here. Um, this is the Leica SL. And uh, this one have also the ability to uh, digital shot and also the Leica Q2, that's a smaller camera. So, and of course, lots of cameras, you could say uh, Nikon uh, and everybody else, now goes away from having this noisy shutter and it's expensive to make and it might break after 100,000 or 200,000 pictures. 
it's not there anymore except it is here so if you want to use the shutter but you said that just means the m12 is going to be without. out um, then we get to the big question this one is 9000 from new uh, and it also comes with an ef like this one that's a new model and you can see this one is already uh, falling apart i helped it i dropped it on the floor that's how you do it uh, i will put it back again together uh, when i've studied a little bit how it looks inside but this is this is how it looks and sits on the camera. Um, <clears throat> then of course we get to the big question, what, what camera should I get? And you could say the simple answer, if there is any, uh, well there is a simple answer because I can just tell you I don't have to do it. Um, the simple answer is if you are getting into Leica Digital for the first time and you don't want to flush out uh, $9,000 for this one and $700 for an EVF, and then another few hundred dollars for an extra battery. Then the M240 here is probably the best bet you have uh, for getting into the Leica Digital. It can do anything and it's a great camera. Uh, CMOS sensor, it, I mean, it's fine, it's great. If you want to spend a little bit more to get something classic and a little bit more like film-like and slower in everything and more simple, then you go M9. Uh, but I would say right now, this is uh, the deal. Then of course with the M11 coming out, there's going to be a lot of M10s. M10Ps are not a lot, but there is going to be more than there used to be secondhand and that the price is going to drive down. But it's not like the price is crass. It is like they're going to come out and then, uh, you know, this is M10 is going to be, it is five, six thousand now, maybe it's going to be four and a half and then you wait four more years and then comes M12 and then, you know. so. Uh, so it's kind of like a matter of taste. I would say the M10P with the silent shutter is something I really appreciate. Uh, and then we have the M10R that you could say if you don't like all the fancy new stuff uh, with this camera and a new feel of it because it is a live view and it means when you turn on the camera it, it says a click. Uh, and if you use the mechanical shutter it almost goes, goes up and down and up and down for each picture you take. So it goes very fast but it's kind of like what is this? This one doesn't. The M10R, you can say here we have 40 megapixels. It's plenty, you don't actually need 60. Um, so this is a good deal. Um, and, and it might actually go to become a classic because 40 megapixels is gonna last you uh, a long way. Um, so, so this is definitely a thing. And I mean, it's only two years old camera. Uh, it's very up-to-date uh, technology. And it doesn't have these fancy new disturbing things that the M11 has, that maybe you're going to love it later, but maybe right now you're not ready yet. Um, and of course there is special editions of everything, or limited edition, or whatever you could say. If you go back to the M8, you can find uh, the Leica M8, M8 II in this Safari Gain. It came back then as a limited edition with a lens. Those ones sell for 10,000. Uh, either almost new or new. Uh, so if you want to floss out some money and have something very special, then you go that route. Uh, the M10R here, uh, there's also a few uh, limited editions or special editions. I have one here, is the black paint uh, one. So it's simply just glossy black paint and it means the more you use it, the more it brass just like this one. So you can see the brass here. And that's one thing the M11 doesn't have because uh, the silver one here is a brass top plate, so it is going to brass, but silver doesn't really brass. You have to use it a lot for, to see the brass. The black one, they put aluminium on top, which lowered the weight of the camera with 135 grams, which it feels like a lot and is a lot, uh, but it's never going to brass because there's no brass, it's aluminium. Uh, so this is very old school and, you, and it has like a silver button here. Uh, and also the shutter speed dial here is very like the like an MP film camera. That is also one that is like, no, that is a real camera. Um, so there's this one, and then there's different versions of, uh, <coughs> of M10, M10P in white and other uh, limited edition and different colors and so on. So there is, if you fall in love with, no, M10P is my thing, 24 megapixel, I love it, it's soundless. Uh, then you can go start looking at what can I find of uh, limited editions. And I think that was kind of my overview of, uh, of the Leica cameras, uh, the digital cameras. 
and I hope it has been uh, helpful for you. I hope you're not too confused or concerned about uh, your economy or anything like that. Uh, but that's the short story of the different breakthroughs of the cameras. You can say, in a way, not much happened. Uh, in the digital line here, uh, it's kind of small improvements all the way, but not a huge difference for taking pictures. Uh, so that's the, that's the story. Go below the video, there's uh, a free book you can download, an e ebook, uh, and there's links to my different articles, my books, my video classes on uh, the different models here. Uh, and there's also the link to Ken Hansen, uh, where you can buy secondhand cameras and you can trade in your cameras and buy a new one or whatever you like to. So that's all I had to say today. So thank you for watching and remember till I see you next time to always wear a camera, uh, minimum, minimum one. Um, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.